There's been a major development in artificial intelligence this week, and by crikey, it's got tongues wagging in the tech world. It's the release of ChatGPT. This is a chatbot created by OpenAI. That's a company that was founded by Elon Musk in 2015. And I gotta tell you, you can pretty much put any question into this thing and it will do, I give you an answer, including write stories, give life advice, and it will even code computer programs and make corrections to the programs that you've coded. It was quite incredible when I tested it today. And now I'm joined by Dr. Marcel, Marcel Schart, a business analytics lecturer at the University of Sydney. Doctor, it's thank you for joining me. I had a go at using this this morning and I asked this technology, write an article in the style of Corey Bernardi about <laughs> politics and culture. In 10 seconds, it spat something out that could have been my words, except I would have used a bit more praise about conservatism, but it was just incredible. How does this technology work? Well, what's incredible about this new season is that it's much more effective than uh, the technology that we had before. So as I said, so you can, uh, you know, you can get it to answer questions, to give explanations, you know, to write poems, to write computer programs, uh, you know, give you life advice, brainstorm ideas, and it works exceptionally well compared to the uh, chatbots that existed before. So it's really a leap in technology. So for those of us who are old enough to remember, it's a bit like when Google search came out. So it does the same as the previous tools, but it's much more effective. And people are jumping to the opportunity to, to use this amazing technology. Yeah, one of the things I didn't understand was in some of the questions I posed to it, uh, it, it came back and said, I'm not allowed to search the internet. And so I don't have the most up-to-date information. What would be the purpose they're not allowing it to search the internet? And how does it store or deliver the information if it's not able to access it? Yeah, the way this uh, chatbot is trained is that we, uh, they give it a lot of, uh, of data in the forms of books, uh, news articles, Wikipedia articles, and lots of websites. And this data has to be collected at a particular point in time. So they gather all this data and then they feed it to the computer uh, to, to build the model, and then uh, at the end we have this uh, chatbot. But it has, this data is fixed in time. So it's a data particular uh, point in time, and uh, it doesn't get updated like this. So the technology doesn't allow for this. Yeah, and that was one of the other interesting things was that I asked it about Australia's current prime minister, and it was backed um, to earlier this year before the election. But then I was able to issue a correction to that and say that's not accurate. And apparently the machine technology is learning from my input as well. Um, you know, this is a game changer, I think, for a lot of businesses, isn't it? Yeah, so this is definitely the first system that became popular that is able to do that. So it takes feedback from you and accepts corrections. So it admits his mistakes and is a really good uh, positive step in this technology. Uh, yeah, so it definitely doesn't have current information, but at least you can have a conversation with it and say, look, like things have changed, and then it's going to update uh, the answers based on this. Okay, I can uh, feel people out there saying to themselves, this could cost me my job. I'm a writer or I, I produce scripts or do uh, information for my local business. There is also the potential that this technology could be used for uh, even worse ideas, I guess. Um, how do you respond to that? Should we, we, we be worried about it? Well, first of all, for those of you at home, uh, they are worried about this technology. Uh, let me say that I encourage you to be curious, explore it, try for yourself, and it can be useful uh, for you today. So use it to your advantage. And in terms of AI like replacing humans in all sorts of tasks, I also wouldn't worry about this uh, for now. So it still has a long way to go because uh, AI, uh, despite, you no, know, is, is going to continue to amaze us, but it doesn't have any intent, is not capable of creative problem solving, is not flexible, is not able to adapt to changing circumstances. So it's not capable of critical thinking. So it doesn't work like a human. So it, it, we do well, things that it that's cannot. A very that's encouraging to know. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Dr. Shah, thank you very mm -hmm. much for your time. I'm sure we'll talk again very soon. Yeah, thanks so much, Corey. Wow, good to be human, isn't it?